Today we're gonna to be talking about the basics and how you can master them and become a better photographer all in less than 10 minutes. So let's put 10 minutes on the clock and let's roll that intro. Photography is all about light. And if you think about it, everything that you see around you is actually reflected light. And your eyeballs are just capturing all that light and your brain processes it and creates an image, which is what you see. And a camera works the same way. So I want you to think of your eyeballs as a camera. If you stare at the sun for a really long time, then it gets really bright and you burn your eyeballs out and you're gonna be in excruciating amounts of pain. Or you could blink really fast and you can look at the sun. You can also squint and that helps. Um, and some people are just not sensitive to light at all, while some people are very sensitive. The same thing applies to a camera. You can control how long you stare at a light source. You can control how much of that light source gets in, kind of like squinting and opening your eyeballs wide open. And you can control how sensitive it is to light. Now these three ingredients are called shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And together they make up the exposure triangle. Now each of these ingredients have special properties, which we'll get into later. But first, let's take a look at how a camera works. Here is the sensor on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now basically how a camera works is that there are these wavelengths of light coming in and it hits your sensor and your sensor picks up all this light and it creates an image for you to see. Now there's a lot of science behind it, but that's the general idea. In front of the sensor are two curtains that hide it. And when you take a photo, the first curtain goes up, revealing the sensor, and then the second curtain comes up, closing it up. And that's basically how a camera takes a photo, which is kind of really cool. The slow-mo guys did a video right here and you can see the first curtain go up, the sensor's revealed, and then the second curtain goes up. So that brings us to our first ingredient, which is shutter speed. And that's basically how long the sensor is exposed to light. And we measure this in seconds, so it can open up for three seconds. Or it could be like five or 10 seconds, or it could be really quick like this, which is one one thousandth of a second, which is really, really fast. Now think of it like staring at the sun for three seconds or blinking at the speed of one one thousandth of a second, right? It's gonna let in either a lot of light or not a lot of light. So that's reflected in how bright your image is. If you let in three seconds worth of light, then it's gonna be pretty bright. But if you have a shutter speed of say one one thousandth of a second, then not a light's gonna enter your camera and hit that sensor. So it's gonna be a darker image. So faster shutter speed, darker image. Slower shutter speed, brighter image. There's a very special property that comes with shutter speed. If I opened up my sensor for three seconds, it's actually going to capture everything that it sees within those three seconds. So if I move around within those three seconds, it's gonna capture all that movement. And if I have a shutter speed of say one one thousandth of a second, then it's only gonna capture the movement during that time, which is very, very short, it's really fast. So it's gonna freeze the action. So if I have like this lens here that I'm trying to throw up and catch, and I wanna freeze the action, then I'm gonna need a very fast shutter speed, right? Because if I had a very slow shutter speed, like one over 1 25th of a second, then it's gonna capture all that motion. So you kind of see the difference between a fast shutter speed and a slow shutter speed and how that can affect your shot. So let's say I wanna capture a horse running really, really fast or galloping. I don't think horses run, they gallop. I want a horse galloping really fast, then I'm gonna need a fast shutter speed. But if I wanna capture say movement and like waterfalls or something like that, I'm gonna need a slow shutter speed. Let's take a look at the shot here. Now, this is a photo of Dubai and if you've ever been, then you'd know how fast paced the city is. I really wanted to represent how insane the city is and how fast paced it is. So I decided to use a slow shutter speed to give that kind of motion looking vibe to the image. So I used a very slow shutter, which I believe was 25 seconds long, and that created the light streaks that you see down here. And yeah, that just gave the photo a very unique look. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Elliot, if I dropped my shutter speed to say five or 10 or 30 seconds, wouldn't that make my image really, really bright? And the answer is yes, it's probably gonna be white. Uh, and that brings us to our second ingredient, which is aperture. Now I have my old lens again with me, and I'm gonna show you what aperture looks like once I've centered it. There you go. Okay, so you see this hole right here, it's very tiny. If I open it up, then you can kind of see more of me. And this is basically aperture. So the smaller the hole, the less light that's gonna enter your camera. And bigger hole means more light. Now we measured shutter speed using seconds, and with aperture, we use something called f-stops. 
It's a little confusing, there's a lot of science behind it, but basically what you need to know is that a small number, like one or two, actually means a wide or bigger hole, which lets in more light. A big number, like 22, actually has a small hole, which lets in less light, making the image darker. Let's go back and toss that lens into the air. Now we know that we need a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second to be able to capture that in motion and freeze it to make it sharp. But one over one thousandth is pretty fast, which is going to make my image dark. So to balance it out, I know that a small number makes a big hole, which makes my image brighter. So I'm going to choose a smaller number, like this lens can do 2.8, which is the lowest that it will go. And that's going to create a really cool image like this, and you're going to notice that the background is blurry. And that's the special property about Aperture. It can make your background blurry or have everything in focus. The professional term for a blurry background is shallow depth of field, and when you have everything in focus, we call this a large depth of field. So, this is where you're going to get confusing, but I'm going to try to explain it well. Small number, big hole, brighter, and blurry. Big number, small hole, darker image, and sharp. I made up two acronyms to kind of help you remember this, and the first one's LSD, which stands for larger number, sharper background, and darker image. And the second one, which is SBB, stands for smaller number, blurrier background, and brighter image. So let's say I know for sure that I want a very blurry background. Well, SBB says that for a blurry background, I need a small number, and that's gonna make a very bright image. So I'm gonna set my aperture down all the way to its lowest number, and I'm seeing that my image is very bright. So in order to darken it, I can use my shutter speed and make it faster to make it darker until it looks right. In this photo here, I slowed my shutter speed down to 1 25th of a second, which is pretty slow, so I can capture the movement of the waterfall. But that would mean that my image would be too bright because very slow shutter speed. So to compensate, all I had to do was raise my aperture because I know that a large number on my aperture would make the hole smaller, which makes my image darker, and it was perfect at f8 for this photo. So in order to freeze this motion, what I'm going to need is a fast shutter speed, like 1 over 1,000th of a second. And that's going to freeze the action, but it's going to make my image a lot darker. And to balance that out, naturally, I would just lower my aperture to like 2.8 or whatever the lowest it'll go on my lens, and that's going to make my image brighter, because SBB, smaller number, blurry background, brighter image. But what if I don't want a blurry background? What if I want a sharp background where everything's in focus? Well, I know that according to LSD, large number, sharper background, darker image. So I have to set my aperture to a large number or a high f-stop like f8. So now I have a fast shutter speed and a high f-stop, which is a terrible combo because that's going to make my image extremely dark. So what else can I do to make my image brighter? Well, you know what they say, if you can't make it, fake it. And that brings us to our third and last ingredient, which is ISO. Uh, you can think of it as fake light, but really it's just the sensitivity of the sensor to light. So a low ISO, like 100 for example, is not sensitive to light or not as sensitive, and that's going to produce a very clean image. Whereas a high ISO, like 6400 for example, now that's very, very sensitive to light, which is going to make my image very bright, but it's also going to be very noisy. So that's the side effect, the noisiness. Usually you don't really want that in your photos. So we try to keep our ISO as low as possible and use it as like a last resort to brighten up the image if necessary. So going back to my image, I have a shutter speed of one over one thousandth of a second to make sure that the action is frozen. I have an f-stop of f8, and that's my aperture, and that's going to make sure that the background is also in focus. And the last thing I'm going to do is just dial that ISO up all the way until my image looks right. There's really not much you can do about the noisiness other than in editing or by adding more light sources in order to bring that ISO down. Lastly, we have the exposure level indicator and this measuring stick looking thing basically has a negative side which is underexposed or too dark and a positive side which is overexposed or too bright. So if you want to stick in the middle, that's basically the perfect exposure area and sometimes you do want to go a little overexposed or underexposed but that depends on the situation. If you're just starting out in photography, then I highly suggest you getting more familiar with your shutter speed, aperture, and ISO and learn how they interact with each other and how they affect your overall exposure. And once you got that down, then it's really fun because you can start using each setting to tell a different story. For example, if you want to isolate something, you could use a shallow depth of field, or if you want to slow down motion, 
then you could use a slow shutter speed. Or if you want to capture something really fast, then you can use a fast shutter speed. There's endless possibilities. And that's the fun in photography. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you have any questions about photography, please do not hesitate to ask me. You can write a comment down here in the comment section below, or you can drop a DM on Instagram at Life with Elliot. Also, this is my first YouTube video in the studio, which I made in the past month because I'm stuck at home. Um, if you have any questions about anything like my studio, I could do a studio tour. And if you have any suggestions on how I could be a better YouTuber or a teacher, then I'll love to hear your constructive criticism and you can drop that down in the comment section below. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Peace.